is homemade pizza. And that's what I'm going to make today. And I'm making it using my Cousinaire, my trusty Cousinaire food processor. I've had this Cousinaire for, oh, about 10 years now, and I use it all the time. And this is where I need my dough. I need my pizza dough in here, and, and when I make bread, I also need the dough in here. Uh, my Cousinaire comes with two blades. I want a regular food processor, uh, slicing, chopping blade, and then a blade for bread mixing. If you don't have that, this, the original blade works just as well. So I'm going to first put two and a half cups of bread flour in my food processor. I'm going to add about a uh, teaspoon of salt. I think that's about that. That looks like about a teaspoon. And I'm going to pulse that for a few minutes. To this, I'm going to add my dry yeast, which we have to dilute now in warm water. One cup of water that I'm going to heat in my microwave to the temperature of about 115, 120. I'm using a candy thermometer to measure the temperature of my water, and it's about 115 degrees. Another way to do this uh, is put some on your wrist like you did when you did baby bottles, and if it feels warm to your wrist, it's the right temperature. This is the tricky part of making pizza, getting the water temperature just right so that you don't deactivate your uh, dry yeast. I'm using one package of dry yeast that I will mix in the warm water. My yeast is dissolved. Now I'm going to just drizzle a little extra virgin olive oil in the water. Oh, I'd say probably that's about it. Put your lid back on your food processor. Remove the feeding tube. Turn your processor on. And slowly drizzle in the water and yeast mixture. Just keep doing that slowly until it's well blended. All my water has been added to the flour. I'm going to check it out, feel it. Hmm, not too bad. Sometimes this is too wet. If it is, just add more flour. Try to have to add flour rather than water. So start out with less flour and add to it as you need. And I'm just going to put a little bit more in here. Turn the food processor back on and let it knead a little bit longer. I've been kneading this for about three minutes, and I'm sure it's done. Feel your dough. It feels elastic. has a little bit of punch to it. It's ready. Remove it from the food processor, and I put some flour on my kitchen, clean kitchen counter. And I'm going to just knead a little bit more of the flour into the dough. Not much kneading, just, just a few turns. I have ready a mixing bowl that I've coated with olive oil. And that's where I'm going to set the dough to rise. And it'll take uh, oh, about an hour to rise, the first rising. And then we're going to punch it down. Let it sit in the bowl again. It feels great. And let it rise a second time. So right now, this is for the first rising. I cover my bowl with a dish towel. And on top of that, I'm going to place it in. I'm going to keep this in a draft-free area. My dough has risen, doubled in size. And now we're ready to roll it out. And I'm going to make a cookie sheet pizza. So I have my cookie sheet ready to go. I've coated it with some extra virgin olive oil. And I have more than enough dough to cover that, to fill that cookie sheet. So I'm going to take a little bit off, about all, about a fourth. I'm going to save that, and I'm going to make a tiny little one for my grandchildren. I'm going to start to roll this out to fit the cookie sheet.
That's about where I want it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my knuckles and stretch the dough. It helps to give air to the dough. And if you like bubbles in your crust, this will help bring some bubbles to the surface when you're baking it. So keep stretching until it fits your cookie sheet. Okay. And once it's in the cookie, cookie sheet, you can also use your hands again and stretch the dough to fill the cookie sheet. There we go. Dough fit the cookie sheet. Now we're going to start layering. My marinara sauce is the first thing that goes on. So coat your crust with nice spoonfuls of marinara sauce. And if you want the marinara sauce recipe, it will be on my blog. And my blog is maryahern.com. Sprinkle some grated Parmesan cheese. Nice strong Reggiano Parmesan cheese is great for this. And some shredded mozzarella. Sprinkle some dried oregano leaves on top. Now we're going to sprinkle a little extra olive oil, which will help brown up the cheese. I have my oven preheated to 500 degrees, and this is going to go into the lower rack of the oven. And we're ready to have pizza in about 15 minutes. It has been cooking for 15 minutes. The cheese is nice and melted and brown, and now it's ready to be sliced. I'm going to give it a few minutes before I slice it. I let it cool just a tiny bit, and then I'm going to slice it, and we're ready to have it. I sliced my pizza in rectangles, and now we're ready to serve. There's always a problem. Who wants the end piece? Everyone seems to like the end piece. I like it the in-between pieces. There you go. And for an added touch, a little crushed red pepper. Give it a little spice. A glass of wine. And bon appetit.